the, the first one, right? And I think this is the part that we both like because it's high risk, high reward, uh, high volatility, you know, it makes you excited and you can't sleep. Um, small and mid-tech um, US technology, right? So that's your amplitudes, your zooms, maybe your EVs, if you are tech nowadays. What do you think? What, what do you think will happen to, to these type of companies? Yeah, that's a, that's a very big one, given the fact that we're, what, what, what the, you know, this quarter has been like. It's <laughs> it, it's been a whole ride of roller coasters, huh? For this this specific space. Yeah. They they've they've uh, all just crashed. Exactly. And and for me it doesn't it doesn't make sense, right? So I mean, I think if you if you look at the the the, the amplitudes of the world, yes, it was running at, at fifty price to sales ratio and, and that's something that I, I'm looking to look forward more. I would say that mm-hmm. I wasn't really fully looking at that when I was analyzing my um my stocks. Um, mainly because I'm looking more at the fundamentals, right? Looking at the expansion areas, looking at, at growth areas, not looking actually at the at the perception of the stock. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's something that I need to look at further, um, and especially in this in this tech space, right? So that's one of the things that that is going to me, or that's what I'm thinking about. And with all this decline that we've seen in the last quarter, I definitely feel that there is some growth and some gains here to be made. Um, in in Q1 uh, and effectively Q4 earnings, right? Which will happen probably yeah. in January. Um, okay. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking so far as a high level. What, what are your thoughts there? I, I don't know, right? So so I think we we come from the same starting point. Um, we both like good businesses that that grow. Uh, maybe I, I look a bit more at relative valuation, so things like price to sales and all that. And and that, that's why you know I think when you talk about amplitude a month or two pack, I was like, oh, this is crazy, right? The price to sales is too high. How, that was 30x though when I went in. When I went in, it was 30x. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm sorry you made money, right? Good for you. <laughs> but but I, I mean, look, right? But but that's the thing. So so buying a good company at a reasonable valuation, it's it's always preferable to, to buying a good company at a, you know expensive valuation, right? Because at the end of the day, we, we still need the valuation to make sense to to in in the, in essence sell for profit, right? Mm. So I think that's the part that, that's interesting to me. Um, in terms of timing, I don't really agree with you. I, I think that there's a still, uh, that there's been a bit of a rally over the past week, but there's still a bit of fear, I would say. And, and mm-hmm. there's still a lot of volatility in the, in the market. So I wouldn't say that the next earnings round will be like Q1 or Q2 2021, where any small bit beat, you know, shoots the, the stock up by 10, 15%. I, I still sense it's a bit more like Q3 or Q4 where a small beat, unless you are a really favorite stock, sends the price down or, or it trades it sideways. So, so I don't think earnings plays will be good. Um, I think it's, it's still a matter of focusing on the fundamentals, looking backwards. You know, may, maybe 2021 was a bit overhyped. So looking backwards to so 2020, 2021, early 2021, how they have improved as a business and, and their relative valuation and then see you know, whether, whether it still makes sense for, for this valuation, right? Which is essentially what I've been talking about with Zoom and, and all of that. So, so yeah, yeah. That, that's just a, a continuation of, of the same thing. Uh, and, and yeah, that there, you know, look, at the end of the day, we, we are in a growthy phase. We are in a tech phase still. Right, um, software is still leading the world. That hasn't changed. Data mm-hmm. is still important. Work from home, the cloud transition, all of these will continue happening. Right, so so these are the teams that that have won big over the last two years, and and I don't see why they would stop now. Yeah. No, fair enough. And maybe you know we could talk a little bit there, right? Where we disagree, because I think that the the market, yes, of course, is pricing into the fact the tapering and and all the uncertainty that goes with with COVID together with other different variables. Mm -hmm. What what is your thinking behind it? Because, okay, so maybe I'll talk about my thinking and then you have to hear your thoughts here. So my thinking is this, right? We've seen a very volatile area uh, in the last quarter for for these growth stocks. And, but the fundamentals have remained largely the same, if not bettered, almost almost like Mm -hmm. quarter on quarter. That's why I see a better one there. That said, I do see because the Fed is looking to taper and they've mentioned that you know, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I'm not entirely sure, there won't be as much liquidity in the market. So that jump, while, while agree, won't be 30, 20%. Mm-hmm. However, I think I do see a 5 to at least a 10% rise in, in these stocks if they outperform, they are expected. Not last yeah. quarter, but they are expected. 
Yeah, I, I see that, that that's where I, I that this is all conjecture, right? You are guessing, I'm of guessing. Course, I, I don't think course, it'll happen. Yeah. And 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 the reason that that I have is, is this, right? You know, we we look at the weakness. We we look at ah, oh, this is terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible only for small cap, right? It it hasn't really hit the giant US tech like your, your mangas and, and Fang and they're the same companies but yeah different acronyms <laughs> it, it hasn't really hit them right so you know when when and and my take on it is when there is real pain in, in the market like we, we are nearly there but we are not really there yet but, but when there is and and those bellwethers start falling then mm. there is broader contagion right so so when people start seeing the whole index the index as a whole start falling Rather than individual shares, then these will continue getting sold down as well. So, yep. so yeah, there there might be a temporary boost in earnings, but I think Q one until the Fed actually starts rising interest rates, so it's not only mm. stopping quantitative easing, it's it's rising interest rates. Then we can have a bit more clarity on the picture. I think right now there's still a bit of hope, so so there's a lot of volatility up and down, right? But you know. And, and because of that volatility, please stay invested. You know, we could be wrong, but but in terms of a range of outcomes, I still think that there is more pain coming our way. Mm. So, in other words, what 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 you're saying? Uh, yeah, you know, and and I think I agree with you. Where where when the Fed looks to raise the interest rates and actually raises the interest rates, we will see something. I don't think it's priced in right now. Yeah. Um. But. Another way to look at this, though, is not look at one quarter, right? You look at two years or three years with these growth stocks. And I think that's where you and I also fundamentally agree, um, where you look at the numbers, you look at, you know, the FCF, for example, you mm-hmm. look at the price sales ratio, you look at where they're going, you look at the expansion strategies. And if your time horizon is two, three, four years, this is quite a, a decent opportunity then. Yeah, yeah. Um, I completely agree. I mean, I, I haven't sold at all into cash, right? I still mm-hmm. hold a lot of my growth stocks and I still DCA a bit here and there. Um, I, I just don't DCA as aggressively in as I would have when, when it was going out, when everything was going up and to the right. Right. So, so, so yeah. it, it's, it's a bit of market timing on my part, which I shouldn't do, I know, but I can't help myself, right? It's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you back your own judgment, I would say. Definitely. No. Cool. Cool. Awesome, All right. Yeah. I, I think that, that's it for the high volatility guys. Um, do, do you have anything else you want to add on this? No, I think, yeah, that's, that's roughly going to be my, my thinking, my play as well. Yeah. Cool. All right. We are, we are aligned somehow. We, we should have a cool <laughs> I know. <portfolio>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, another job for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The next one, um, mega cap. So, so this to me is, you know, your, well, thanks, except Netflix, because they're not a big, um, it's Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple, uh, sorry, Meta, Meta, um, App, Apple, Meta. Google, and maybe uh, NVIDIA, right? Did, did you say Amazon? Look at it? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah. There, there's a lot of A's there, we get confused, but yeah, the, the, <laughs> this, this ilk, that, that, that's six of them. What, what do yeah. you think? Ooh, um... A little worried, a little worried, um, mm-hmm. but not as worried as I, like, not as uncertain as I am with, with growth stocks. I think that's where, mm-hmm. that's where I would be. And because growth stocks have been going through a, a turmoil, right, this last two, mm-hmm. two, three months, I've not really seen that with my, with my mega step, with, my, with the mega cap US tech, right? Your, your yeah, big guys. I think they've been, they've been doing very well, actually. Mm, it's they, been, they they been the increasing. Ones driving, yeah, they're the ones driving the, the index all-time highs. Yes, and it could be, and my, my conjecture here as well is that they're taking money out of the growth stocks and putting it into these big tech because firstly, they believe in the industry. Number two, it's more stable. And number three, these guys are well diversified even in their business operations. So you won't see that much of a drip as we see with, with growth stocks. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know how much more to add to that, to be honest. I mean, All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 are, they are safe, right? It's a flight to safety. They are there. Um, you know, they, they have good companies. I mean, individually, you can pick them off and say, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that. But fundamentally, you know, strong cash, strong balance sheet, you know, modes, everything you want is there. Not cheap enough to be a value stock, but definitely, you know, you're, you're paying a decent, well, I think a slightly elevated price now for, for the, the growth that they're having. Um, six yes. months back, I've said, oh, it's, a, it's a decent price for their growth. But now, now it seems a bit difficult. Um, yeah, so that's the, the only it. thing I have here, though, the only thing I have here, though, is that the 
and, and the thing that always goes in my head is the, the fact that there's a lot of liquidity into the market, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously when people diversify, people put money into mega tech and stuff like this. And when the Fed does increase the interest rates, right? Maybe after, you know, in, in February or whatever, they said they were going to start. How many of that liquidity will be pulled back because they want to pay back their loans before the interest rate actually rises, right? If you're thinking about that macro side of things, I don't want to pay more interest. So I'll just take the money out of the stock market now that was in my mega tech and in everything. And I'll give it back to the bank and then I'll, I'll, I'll play it safe for the next few years. Yeah. And I, therefore I, causing I mean, a drop. I, I think that's what a lot of people are saying. I don't quite agree. And, and the reason is this, right? You know, for all the talk about raising interest rates, it's three rate rises next year. We are going from somewhere historically at its lowest to somewhere historically still very, very low. Right? Low, we, we, yes. are not going, we, are not, we are not going back to the days of you know, 4%, 5% um, Fed rates. Right? We are going to I don't think we'll ever one, see those days again. <laughs> maybe 2%, 2.5 by 2024. That's, that's still extremely low, right? So mm. you know, that, that whole point about oh, rising interest rates, rising costs, yes, obviously, but it's not that big a deal, I, I would say. Um, and even if it was, you could say that uh, a 5% increase in my equities would, would more than make up for that zero point, but that 1% increase in interest rates, right? So I don't think it, it makes too much sense as a story. I, I know people like that mm. narrative, but and, and maybe there, there's broader macro views about how an, a rising interest rate means that people have less, less cash generally, so they take it out of the stock market. And, and that's fine. I, I, I mean, that, that's macro econs 101. Fine, I, I can accept that. I just don't see, and I and that's why I also say that you know that there will be a drop in in the big tech ne next year. I think it's just it's just a causality thing that they have an issue with, right? I, I don't I'm not quite sure if if one necessarily causes the other, but mm. still weakness. Um, we 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 the, the as you say right, the narrative drives the price. So yeah, it, it could still fall and take a profits now if we have them, right? I I did I did take some. So. <laughs> The food is you so did giant. I did, right. I, did, I did take some. <laughs> Look at this right, guy. <laughs> putting my money where my mouth is. <laughs> and, and next year, we need to look for sponsors because I'm broke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. So I think, yeah, for me, it's it's definitely a flight to safety, right? For, for big tech, just as an ending note. Um, and, and maybe we can talk about that towards the end, but I am looking to, to invest in that in, in early Q1. Because mainly in Singapore, yep. we don't get, we don't really get much interest rates in our banks, yep. and even with the drop, it's still going to make percent more. If it makes one percent the whole year, I've made more than putting it in the bank. So yeah. <laughs> that's that's <Right>. always good. <laughs> yeah, All with, right. with cheap transaction costs now, it's it's so much easier to beat the, the risk free rate in a bank. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 